Hey everyone, it's Ari with DAT Bootcamp. Today I'm going to show you how to beat the cube counting section on the DAT. After you watch this video, you should be getting all 15 questions on cube counting right on your DAT practice tests. To start off, we're going to go over some of the rules of the cube counting section so that you know what to look out for. It's a little abstract, but there's four cubes in this image here, and all four of these cubes are cemented together and then painted. And the DAT will ask you questions such as, how many cubes have three of their sides painted? How many cubes have four of their sides painted? How many cubes have five of their sides painted? We're going to go through and break down a strategy that allows you to determine how many cubes have which sides painted with 100% accuracy. So let's start with this problem. Let's make a chart with the number of sides, sides painted, and the number of cubes. So we can have one side painted, two sides painted, three sides painted, four, and five. Now notice we can't have six sides painted because the bottom of these cubes will never be painted. You can imagine that they're resting on some sort of table. And for example, this top cube is resting on a bottom invisible cube. This is a very important concept for the cube counting section. There are no such thing as floating cubes. This cube must have something underneath it to be able to support it. There is always going to be a supporting cube to support cubes that are, that are uh, higher than the other ones. So for example, on this problem, you go one by one on each cube, starting at the lowest level, and count how many sides that cube has painted. And then you make a tally. So let's start with this one. We see that this cube has this side painted, this side painted, has a left side painted, it also has the right side painted, even though we can't see it. We have to know that the right side of this cube is also painted. Remember the bottom is never painted, and the back is not painted because it's resting against that invisible cube. So this cube has four sides painted, so we put a one for that tally. Let's move on to the invisible cube now. The invisible cube has two sides painted. And I'll tell you how I found, figured that out. The front of the invisible cube cannot be painted because this cube is resting in front of it. The left of the invisible cube cannot be painted because of this block. However, the right and the back sides of the invisible cube are exposed and will be painted. The bottom is never painted, and the top cannot be painted because this top cube is resting on top of it. So that invisible cube has two of its sides painted. Let's move on to this cube. This cube has this side painted, has a top side painted, the left side, and the back. It does not have the bottom side or the right side. So this cube has one, two, three, four sides painted. Let's move on to the last cube. This cube has the front side painted, one, the top, two, the left, three, the right side, four, and the back side, five. The bottom is never painted. In this case, it won't be painted because it's actually resting on top of an invisible cube. So this problem actually has five sides painted. Now on the DAT, they'll ask you a question such as, how many cubes have three of their sides, oh, let's not use three. How many cubes have four of their sides painted? And now you just go to your chart that you made, you see how many cubes have four of their sides painted. You count one, two. Two cubes have four of their sides painted. How many cubes have two of their sides painted? One. How many cubes have five of their sides painted? One. All right, let's move on to a more advanced problem now. This is more typical of what you would see on the real DAT. The real DAT would probably give you around 15 to 20 cubes in a problem. They give you about five figures in a test, each with an average of three questions for a total of 15 questions. So let's start off. We're gonna count this, uh, this figure level by level, cube by cube to stay organized. That's the trick to this section. You need to stay very focused and very organized. Make sure you don't lose track of which cube you're counting. Otherwise, you will likely get all three questions wrong. So let's start with this back cube. We see that this side is painted, the top side is painted, the back side is painted, but the left is actually not painted because I see this cube right here. 
If this cube is resting right here against this cube, then the left side cannot be painted. Therefore, this side must have one, two, three sides painted. So I put a one next to the tally of three sides painted. We want this cube. One side painted, two sides painted, the bottom's never painted, the back can't be painted because there's a cube resting against it, the left can't be painted because there's a cube resting against it, and the top can't be painted because there's a top cube against it. This cube has two sides painted. Let's move on to this cube. One side painted, two sides painted, the left or the right can't be painted, the back can't be painted because there's a cube back there. Be very careful. Watch out for these tricks on the DAT. Therefore, this cube only has one, two, two sides painted. Let's do this cube. This one requires a little bit of spatial thinking. This has the top side painted, it has the left side painted, because there's nothing resting against it. It has the back side painted too, but again, it doesn't have the right side because of this cube is resting against it. So this cube right here has three sides painted. One, two, three. Let's move on to this cube. This cube has this side painted. It doesn't have the right or the left or the top, but be careful, it actually has the back side of it painted too, because there's no cube resting against it on the back. So this cube actually has two sides painted. Let's move on to this cube. This cube has one, two, three, and four coming in from the left. Now there's an invisible cube here that we can't see again, resting right behind this one in this area right here. This one requires a little bit of spatial thinking. You have to think, how many sides, exposed sides does this cube have? This cube only has one exposed size, and I'll tell you why. It's because the front is blocked, the right is blocked, the back is blocked because of this cube. If this cube is up here, I know that there must be two other cubes below this one that are supporting this cube. There must be another cube back there here and back there here. So therefore, this invisible cube that we're counting right now only has one exposed side. Let's move on to the one all the way in the back. This one is going to require a lot of spatial thinking because we can't see anything actually. But we know that it must have three sides painted because if you look at the structure of this, it's just a single column moving all the way down. And that cube that we can't see all the way down here must have nothing to its right because there's no cubes here. It must have nothing to its left because there's no, uh, no, more, no more cubes over there. There is no cubes behind it. So that cube actually has three sides exposed. Once you move on to the second level of a cube problem, it generally becomes a little easier. Let's do this problem now. We see one, two, three, four. Four sides painted. What about this one? One, two, three. Coming in from the back. The left is not painted because it's blocked by this one. This cube. One, two, three. Now this cube. One, two from the left, and that's it. Let's move on to the back cube, that invisible cube again. That invisible cube will have three sides painted again. Let's move on to the third and final layer. Starting at this cube, this cube has one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three from the back, and four from the right. One, two, three. And finally, this last cube over here has one side painted, two from the right, three from the back, and four from the left. So now, if the question on the DAT asks you, how many cubes have three of their sides painted? You would say one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides painted. Click next, next problem. How many sides have four of their sides painted? One, two, three, four. There you go. It's that easy. Uh, as you continue doing these problems, you'll begin to see patterns. For example, cubes that are resting by themselves at the very top always have five sides painted. Cubes resting on their own with only one side covered usually have four of their sides painted. These usually have three. It takes practice just like anything else in life, but you'll get very quick at this. You'll begin all of these right before you know it.